These are the problems that I'm going to be working on in this video, so if you'd like to skip ahead to any one of them, please click the appropriate link. Okay, I want to solve this equation, and I'm going to use these steps to do it. This is the steps for solving a linear equation, and it is always going to be this. Okay, so you may be able to omit one of these steps, but these are going to be the most steps you'll ever have to do. Okay, so I made this one step P because you don't always have to do it. You only deal with this one if you have a fraction. Okay, so the first thing you need to make sure you do is that both sides of the equation are simplified. Okay. Then you want to start adding and subtracting things from both sides. Now you will only add or subtract at most two times, once for the x or for the whatever the variable is, and once for the constant. Now that is at most. Now you might ha not have to do both. Okay. And then the very last thing you always do is divide by the coefficient. A lot of students will try to do that early, and in special circumstances you can, but it is best to just always stick to this format because uh, Students generally can't recognize the special for um, the special format or the special circumstances. Excuse me. So with these first two problems here, I'm not going to need to worry about this p. So let's just look at step one and two. Now this left hand side of this equation is definitely not simplified. I know that because it has parentheses. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is simplify this. Whenever you need to simplify, you should always distribute first. Okay. So always. Okay, so first let's distribute the negative 7. A lot of students will try to do 6 minus 7 first and say, well, that's negative 1, and then distribute the negative 1. But you can't do that. Remember, according to order of operations, multiplication comes before subtraction, so you need to distribute first. So 6 minus 7x plus 21 equals negative 1. Okay, well, I'm still not done simplifying, so I'm still not done with step one because I have these like terms here, 6 and 21, so I have negative 7x plus 28, I'm sorry, 27, equals negative 1. Okay, now both sides are simplified. This one always was, but this one is now because I don't have any like terms or parentheses. So once you get to that point, that's when you can start adding and subtracting things from both sides. Well, this example here, I only have to add or subtract the constant. The reason that is is because I don't have x's on both sides. Since I only have an x on one side, I don't have to worry about adding and subtracting for the x. Okay, so this was my step one, and I'm able to skip step two. I just want to add this constant. Essentially, my goal is to get this term containing x by itself on the left-hand side. Well, right now it's got this plus 27, so the way I'm going to get rid of that is by subtracting this 27 away. But if I do it to the left-hand side, I also need to do it to the right-hand side. So I get negative 7x is equal to negative 28. So this was step 3. Okay, now that I have just the term containing x over here and just the constant over here, now I can perform the division. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of the e in front of the x, which is negative 7. So x is equal to positive 4 because I did a negative divided by a negative, and that was my step 4. Remember, division by the coefficient is always the last thing you'll do. Okay, so before we can start adding and subtracting things from both sides, I first need to simplify the left and the right-hand side. Well, this left-hand side is definitely not simplified because it has parentheses. Neither is the right-hand side because it has parentheses. So the first thing I need to do is distribute these to simplify. So 8 times 2x is 16x. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. Okay, 6 times 2x is 12x. 6 times 6 is 36. Okay, now the left and the right hand side are simplified, so I'm done with step 1. Now I have x's on both sides, so I am going to have to do step 2 this time. The way I like to think of it is, 
I just need to pick a side I want my X's on. I could do it on the left or the right, it really doesn't matter. In this case, I'm just going to do it on the left. I want my X's to be on the left. That means I do not want these 12 X's over here on the right, so I need to get rid of them. The way I'm going to do that is by subtracting them away. But if I did it to the left, uh, the right-hand side, I also need to do it to the left-hand side. So I get 4x minus 24 is equal to 36. So that was step two. All right, now I have x's only on one side. That's good. But I have constants on two sides, so I'm going to have to do step three to make sure I only have constants on one side. And I need to get rid of this 20, a negative 24. I only want this 4x here. So the way I do that is by adding 24. Whatever the sign is, you do the opposite. Okay. So I get 4x is equal to Oops, 60. Oh, I just realized that um, with the previous one, depending on um, the level of algebra you're in or the way your instructor prefers your notation, they might prefer this to be written in set notation, in which case you would write it as x is equal to the set containing the number 4, or you might not even have to write the x equals, you could just write the set containing the number 4. Okay, so the last thing you always do is divide by the coefficient. Okay, so that's my step 4. So x is equal to 15, or you can write it as the set containing the number 15. Okay, first step is to simplify. So whenever you're trying to simplify, you always distribute first. Do not add these two guys and then distribute. You must distribute the two first. Okay, so I have 5 plus 8x plus 8 equals 6x minus 3. Okay, so I'm still not done simplifying because I have these two like terms here. So 8x plus 13 equals 6x minus 3. So this was my step 1. Now as long as you make sure the left and the right hand side are completely simplified, you should only have to add something to both sides t at most twice. If you find yourself having to add more than twice, then you probably didn't simplify both sides. Or you're doing something that a lot of students do where they'll just keep adding and subtracting the same number to both sides and kind of putting themselves in this weird little infinite loop. Okay. All right, so at this point, I have x's on both sides, so I need to decide which side I want my x's on. It doesn't matter. I generally like to prefer to have a positive coefficient on my x. So I like to solve so that it's going to have a positive coefficient, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to solve for x on the left, which means I don't want these x's over here on the right. So to get rid of them, because this is positive, I'm going to have to subtract. Now I want to point out that a lot of um, instructors do have problems with this notation here. Um, I used to be one of them, but I kind of gave up on it um, because my students were always doing it regardless of how much I complained about it. So I kind of um, joined the dark side with them and started doing it as well because it is easier to notate. Um, uh, some professors prefer that you write it like this. So, you know, if your professor does prefer that notation, please do use that. Because, you know, if they're anything like I used to be, they'll probably take points off. Okay, anyways. So, now that we have x's only on one side, I want to have only constants on one side. So, here I got a constant, and I just want this x here. So, I'm going to get rid of this uh, 13. Since it's added, I'm going to need to subtract it. So 2x is equal to negative 26. So that's my step 3. All right. 
Now the last thing you always do is divide by the coefficient in front of the x. In this case it's 2, so x is equal to negative 13, or you can say that the solution is the set containing the number 13. Okay, so here we have an equation with fractions in them, and in general, students prefer, I don't want to say they hate, but they prefer not to have fractions in their equation. Okay, I'm just going to say it, they hate having fractions. Um, so the best thing to do is just get rid of them in the very beginning. Okay, now the way you're going to do that is by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator of the, fra of the fractions. So if you look at this, we have a 3, a 4, and a 6. So the smallest number that's divisible by all three of those is 12. So I'm saying if I multiply each side of this fraction by 12, I'm sorry, each side of this equation by 12, all the fractions will essentially disappear. Now let's see how that works. So if I do 12 times 2 over 3x minus 3 over 4 equals 12 times 1 over 6x plus 21 over 4. So make sure you put it in parentheses. So you put both sides in parentheses. The reason you need to do that is so you can distribute the 12 to each piece. Okay. So what I need to do is multiply 12 by 2 over 3. Now I'm first going to show you how that looks in the calculator. And then I'm going to explain to you why this is working. So I do 12 times the fraction 2 over 3. 8. So notice, no fraction. It's a nice constant. So the reason we picked 12 was we knew it was divisible by 3, 4, and 6. So I knew if I multiplied 12 by each one of these fractions, it would be divisible by the denominator. So I know I could do 12 divided by 3. I know I could do 12 divided by 4. I know I could do 12 divided by 6. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the 12 divided by the denominator and then multiply that result by the numerator. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And then we have to refer, uh, remember our x as well. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Then I multiply that by 3, so 3 times 3 is 9, so minus 9. Now, if you have trouble with that, you can obviously always just do, um, do it in your calculator and it'll tell you. Okay. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 2 times 1 is just 2. X. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times 21 is going to be 63. Okay, now I have a nice pretty equation with no fractions in it. Okay, so now I have x's on both sides. I want to get rid of the ones over here on the right. Okay, so I'm going to do that by subtracting 2x from both sides. Okay, I just randomly decided I wanted to solve for it on the left. It wasn't really terribly random. I wanted to make sure I had a positive coefficient, but it really doesn't matter which, um, if I subtract 2x or subtract 8x. So I'm left with 63 on the right and 6x minus 9 on the left. Okay, the next step is to add 9. Okay, so this, I'm um, sorry, I'm not labeling my steps. So that's step 1. I'm sorry, step P. Uh, we didn't have to do step one because it was already simplified. So this is step two, and this is step three. And I might run out of room, so I might have to finish it over here. So six x is equal to seventy-two. Excuse me. Okay. So now I need to divide both sides by six. And yes, I am going to finish it up over here. That's my last step. So that means x is equal to 72 divided by 6, which is, should be 12, I think. Yes. Or you can say the set containing the number 12.
Okay. Now you can solve this one in the exact same fashion that we solved the previous one, where we multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator of the fraction, which in this case would just be the product of the two because they're relatively prime, or 20. But there's actually an easier way. Whenever you have the format fraction equals fraction, that is what is known as a proportion problem. Okay. Now, whenever you have a proportion problem, you can cross multiply. Now, um, I find that a lot of textbooks don't show students, um, a lot of algebra textbooks don't show students how to cross multiply. And I think it has to do with they want students to remember this LCD method because it's very helpful in other types of problems. Also, proportions don't show up too terribly frequently in the sections where you're just um, dealing with solving equations. But I think another reason may be because students really love cross multiplication. They love it so much that they try to do it whenever they see a fraction. Um, they might be asked to add these two fractions and they'll try to cross multiply. Um, you can only cross multiply when you have fraction equals a fraction. Okay. So the way cross multiplying works is you take the numerator of the first and multiply it by the denominator of the second. So we would do 4 times 3x minus 2. The denominator of the first and multiply it by the numerator of the second. So 5 times 2x plus 4. Now we have a nice equation with no fractions. So the next thing I need to do though is simplify so that I can solve this. So I distribute. So I'll have 12x minus 8 equals 10x plus 20. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I have both sides simplified so I can start adding and subtracting things. I just need to decide which side I want my x's on. Let's put them on the left. So that means I'll subtract out these 10 on the right. So we have 2x minus 8 is equal to 20. All right, now I only want x's over here, so i got to get rid of this minus 8, and I'm going to do that by adding 8. So 2x is equal to 28. Okay. And the last step is to divide by the coefficient in front of the x, so divide by 2. So x is equal to 14, or you can say x is equal to the set containing the number 14. Or x is an element of the set containing the number 14.